Aston Martin slaying it. Slaying it. Shit, come here. 17. 17 is first, 17. baby. Mwah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't kiss fish. All right, oh. here we go. Oh, it does stink. It does stink. Uh, oh, ooh. God, what color is that? Yeah, no. No. It's not my favorite. No, are you going to swallow it? Mmm. <laughs> Duck feet's next. Stinky well, tofu, no. I bought it. But... No. Why would you buy that? All right, we just made it onto the beach. We are rolling deep. It's going to be a good day. Game plan. Game plan is we're going to try to get the drone in the air to see the spots that are producing fish for us today. And then also, we're going to eat a little bit. Just a little bit. We'll have some ramen on the beach. Monica and Leroy brought some salmon masubi. That's gonna be delicious. And then we're gonna catch some fish. That's the plan and we're sticking to it. <laughs> Got Ian in the back. What's up? What's up? Mario. Yo, what's up course. everybody? <laughs> Everyone else is in the other cars. This is gonna be this is gonna be some fun times. So remember earlier we said that we rolled deep. <laughs> We roll pretty freaking deep. Everybody's eyes are wide open. Yeah. But we did find. We all just decided to stop right here. And if you guys remember from our last video, the Bard Surf Perch love the rollers with a lot of foam, lets them hide from predators. So we're going to give it a shot in this spot. If we start really hooking up, we'll definitely send the drone up in the air just to give you an aerial view so that conceptually you guys can really start to understand where the perch like to hide. Even in your waters, your waters might not look exactly like this, but a lot of the concepts will still apply. So hopefully this video helps you guys. All right, it looks like Bruce just hooked up and what we're showing you right now is an aerial view of this exact moment. And this is why we stopped right here, exactly right here, is because to the right of your screen, you see that this big pocket ends and then you got this whitewash on the left side of your screen all the way up to shore. And essentially what's happening is when you see the water, the waves tell you the topography of what's going on under the water. So you can tell that whole section is a deep section where it's darker and then where you see all that white water, there's a bit of a hump there. And that's where it looks like Bruce just hooked up on this fish. So let's take a quick look at it. There you go. This is the first fish. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one, ladies and gentlemen. That is a big fish. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Wow. Nice. Whoa, what'd you get it on? On the Kalisa. What? Okay, baby, okay. It worked. Dude, hold on, let's hold that up. That's a good one, brother. That is a good one. It might be, and look how he ate it. Oh my goodness. Hungry little fella. On yeah. that Kalisa. Hungry. Shoo. <laughs> All right, guys, so Bruce just caught that. Let's circle it here on the, on the aerial footage, but super cool. We're excited. We're going to hit this spot more. But yeah, with this aerial footage, you can see a lot of the foam. You can see where it's deep. So the deep spots are right here, here, and here. So if you can cast to them and bring it through some sort of whitewash, since that's where it's a little bit higher, you should be able to start picking some off, just like Bruce did. Um, so I threw it out, landed about maybe about 15 yards out, hit hard on the Kalisa Super Glow sardine and it was perfect man can't ask for more all right here we go let's see if we can get on them get one like Bruce's And we'll fish next to Monica, celebrate with her on her first fish on a lure. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh God, yeah. Uh oh. Woo! Woo -hoo! Let's go! This first one's a big one. It looks like it. Measure the dude, man. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. 17. Close 17. Woo! No, baby! Hell yeah, Leroy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Woo! New PB, baby. I can tell you. Hell yeah. Seventeen. How do you feel? I feel it feels amazing just to you know not only have my you know new PB but you know share to be here with all everybody. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, dude. And especially since we're catching cooking today, it's gonna be even that much greater. <laughs> Woo! Love it, dude. Martin's slaying it. Slaying. Seventeen. Seventeen is first, 17. baby. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't kiss fish. And unfortunately, at this point of the video, the microphone and audio stopped working on the GoPro. No, it's the second time. So, for the rest of this video, any of the narration will come from post-editing. Which is super unfortunate because a lot of cool things are about to happen. After seeing Martin's fish, we were all stoked. And the beautiful part is it was still early. Everyone was ready to catch some more. And at this point in the video, I hook up on a good one. But at first, it really felt like it was only about 12 inches or so. It didn't really feel like a really, really quality fish. But here, you will see why. This fish literally had limited mobility because the bait was so far down its throat. Look at this thing. It took the bait all the way almost to the front trebles. So wild. For real, look at it. This is just a testament to show that when you work a bait really, really slow, the perch really has a great opportunity at inhaling the whole bait. This fish came in at right at 15 inches. Definitely a quality fish. Throughout the rest of the time that we fished, we fished there about two hours. There was not a lot of quantity, but the quality was all there. This is Joe's fish. He caught it on a gulp sandworm. And then shortly after that, Ian ends up hooking up on another fish on the Kalisa. And if you would like to order some of your own, the link is in the description. And don't forget to use the coupon code hook to cook to save 10% off your full order. About 30 minutes after Ian pulled in his fish, I end up hooking up on a really good one as well. And then as I end up pulling it up, I tell Monica to go ahead and start fishing that same exact pocket that I caught. When I remove the hook on this fish, I looked closer and I realized that this fish had been caught before. You can tell by the way the upper lip had already had a cut and has already started healing. I went ahead and I showed Monica this fish and after discussing it, we figured we might as well give this fish a third lease on life.
not very long after releasing that fish and telling Monica to fish in that same exact pocket, she ends up hooking up on a really good one and it happened to be her first fish on the Kalisa. And that prediction earlier in the video came true. It was so awesome. It was such a moment of victory for her. It was great to share that experience. It's my first one on a Kalisa. Come on, baby. Oh, just like you said. Just like you said. FG not Kalisa. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, baby. How are you? Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, look how he ate it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. It's getting better, guys. This is a good day out there. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, should I keep this one or It's up to you. There you go. So your first Kalisa fish is going back home. Yep. Everybody might think I'm crazy, but you know what? The ocean gives to us all the time. You gotta give back. Yeah. Okay. Am I crazy to put a fish like this back? How big? About 14 inches? No, the ocean gives, but you have to give back to the ocean. You're almost home. You're almost home. Come here, baby. Kalisa. <laughs> Beautiful. And at this point, we were really just in awe of everything that just happened. It was pretty amazing. How could the stay get any better? But it does. At this point, we had been fishing this spot for about two hours, so the tide has changed. So we thought that it is a pretty good time to put the drone back in the air to see how the water has changed while we've been fishing this. When we arrived, it was peak high tide, and at this point, the water had receded quite a bit, and now the holes were closer. So let's take a look at that. So to the bottom left of your screen, you will see Leroy and Monica, and to the right, you will see the rest of the guys. But Leroy and Monica are pretty much exactly where Monica caught that last fish. And if you look here, you can see that is where this channel meets a sandbar closer to shore. And that is where I caught that first fish with the tear in its lip, and then that's where Monica caught her fish. Now, if you look closely as well, what is the two deep pockets that we showed in the earlier footage separated by that center hump. That center hump actually does have a channel that breaks all the way through so this big hole actually goes parallel to the beach. So if you're able to get down deep enough you can actually cast right into the hole and bring it through all of that white water. A lot of this wave action you can see breaks right at that sandbar which does stir up a few creatures for the perch to eat. One last thing you can notice from this footage is there's actually a secondary trough here in this area. There's a sandbar that's right at the edge of the big troughs and then right at the point where it meets the shore there's another deeper portion. However, the farther into low tide it goes, the more it disappears and the lower the chances there are fish in those pockets. And then what happens is the bigger pockets become too far to cast to. Again, the reason we do these types of videos is so we can learn as much as we can from productive water, and then also to share it with you guys as well to make your trips on the surf that much better. And then if you did find this content helpful, definitely drop a like. And if you haven't already and you would like to see more footage like this, definitely subscribe. It encourages us to make more content like this. It's two fish and I missed one, so. Here we go guys, we got some lunch. Wow. So I try, I'm like, oh, am I gonna get skunked? I go, don't let me down, Kalisa. And sure enough, here it is. It works. Kalisa, super glow. Woo -woo. You wanna go get me a bucket of water? Yeah, the triceps going. We're not going to take the guts out because we're going to play it, so I'm just going to go around the guts today. Nice. 
Those are some nice, oh, clean cuts. This one's for our boy Mats. Get well Harbor. soon. Thank you. Fisherman's life. Harbor. Huh? Harbor Get up and no, walk, no, no, boy. Was, uh, he's... Except we don't have avocados today. Oh, it's just uh, Japanese rice, and we put some seasoning, a little sea salt. And uh, inside is uh, salted salmon that we grill, uh, that we broil, and then uh, and then we put a little seaweed on the outside. It's traditional Japanese rice ball. Like Bob grew up eating these his whole entire so life. These go hand in hand. Onigiri, OG. And then this is some of what's what's in it. We call it shaky shakies, but it's like put it There's. Um, and you can get this at Albertsons everywhere. Uh, but it's usually sesame seeds and um, that's the base. There'll be uh, soy mid in. This has got dried shaved bonito in it. And then this is just seaweed and sesame. Oh, it's it good has on bonito rice. in it. Oh, yeah. I love that stuff. So. Seriously, what else is better than this, guys? We're like eating, got all this going on, and there's still some fishing going on. 13 possible fortunes, but yeah. Look at that mouth. What that mouth do? Yeah, Mario didn't want to leave his spot, so uh, I'm on fish duty every time he catches a fish. I think he's going to measure close to 15, if not a little over. Good idea, Bob. Oh, hot soup when it's cold on the beach. Can't beat it, brother. Who has it better than this? Living pretty good, dude, I think. All right, so we are full and happy, and we still got guys out there fishing. We haven't really seen them picking up anything else. It's pretty much peak low tide right now, and all the spots are exposed, and the deepest pockets are literally well beyond casting range. So we're pretty much calling it a day and uh, enjoying one another's company, which again, that's what it's all about. And God, we are so blessed to be able to just pop up shop and cook and hang out and spend time with one another. So hopefully this encourages you to do that wherever you're at with your friends. Just get out there and have some fun. There we go, stinky tofu. Oh! <laughs> Is it? <laughs> smell like, smell like uh, dirty feet. Not though? Uh, no, yeah. even worse. Oh, uh, <laughs> dirty feet? Honest. Yeah. Oh, it's it's like bad cheese. Yeah. Like real bad cheese. I don't eat it. No. Oh, okay. All right. Gotta try it. Oh, it. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't taste bad. It just stinks. There's a reason they sell it. You know, it's gotta taste good. Let me see, Leroy. It's gotta be good. It's really, it's really not that bad. Well, let me uh -oh. see. It stinks. It's, right. gotta, it's gotta be good. Uh, well, it does stink, but here. It's not okay. a challenge. It's sticky tofu. It's actually pretty good. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Who, who wants to try some? No! It's good! Oh, it's good! <laughs> it's good! <laughs> not a challenge. It's good? It's good! Oishi! Alright, here we go. Oh, it does stink. It does stink. Uh, oh, ooh. God, what color is that? That's not natural. Yeah, no. No. It's not my favorite. No. Are you gonna swallow it? Mm. It's not bad. It's all right. Duck feet's next. Stinky tofu, no. I bought it. No. Why would you buy that? Because I saw it on all the food shows, and I try everything that I possibly can. Because you never know. You might like it. If you hate it, at least you know you hated it. Yeah. You gotta try it. It's true. Look at this. Yeah, no, no, there's an aftertaste. There's an aftertaste to that. It's not very good. But you should try it. You should try it. Try it at least once. Yeah. Ah, it's all right now. Fish are just it's not bad. Not feeling it? No, it's all right. It stinks, but it's, 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 it's not like bad. Kim, Inhale it's like while you eat it. Inhale, inhale. All right, next. <sighs> I'm not gonna eat it again. <laughs> next, we gotta do duck tongue. What? what are you doing, Leroy? Why? Well, because I thought they had a Oh, longer. look, the tongue came out. It's a tongue, man. It's like, right, it's like uh, you know, pork right. tongue, beef tongue. That's bomb. Let's you try know. it. Yeah. That is a duck tongue, tongue right there. <laughs> duck tongue. Goes like that. Okay, it's a duck tongue. Duck tongue. 
It's probably not bad. It's probably better than that it's tofu. Than tofu. It's probably better than the tofu for sure. It's got like cartilage in it. Yeah, it is, but you know what it tastes It's got like a bone. It tastes like the, a Chinese That's a bone. I don't know why this just became this became like a a bizarre foods episode. This is a bizarre foods episode right now. We should have just gone all out. Because you already did a challenge. Yeah. This is just kind of a little yeah. after challenge light yeah. soiree. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, no. <laughs> this is ridiculous. That tongue is awful. <laughs> but you didn't like the tongue? Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Sorry. Uh oh. Come on. There's something hard in there. There is something hard in there. Yeah, on the so chest, like it's like a little bone. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll eat that part. No. I'm trying to get rid of it. I, I chewed it. Oh, that's, that's what I meant. It burnt off there. Something else. Oh. <laughs> this isn't really the tongue, you know that. <laughs> it really is the tongue, right? No? Uh, I don't know. No, no, no. Oh, he, gave, he gave you the wrong piece. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> it's something part uh, they make uh, other ducks with. It. Yeah. <laughs>